Vallejo High School is located in South Minneapolis and we are currently serving 100 students. Of our 100 students, 97% of them identify as Latinx. Our students come to us from all different areas of Minneapolis and surrounding neighborhoods. We're here at El Colegio. We are trauma-informed and we center in the student needs. Not what we need as adults, but what are our students going to actually take advantage, whatever their path might be. This school may be different than some of the other schools. I feel like um, I have the autonomy to do my job the way I feel like it needs to be done. I think this is what education really looks like, right? A community school that serves, people, that serves students within their community and uses the experiences that um, our students and staff and community members are going through uh, to learn, to, to empower themselves, to continue to grow. Teachers here are, as I say, are really helpful. If you have any questions, if you are concerned about anything, or even if you have some suggestions about how the school is being managed, you can just always talk to them. Each teacher, no matter who, you can always talk to them. Spanish or English, it doesn't matter. Also, they have been really close to the Latino community. All of them, all of them I know, they have been really close to our community, so they know what we experience. Here at El Colegio, while we may be small, we're very unique in the way in our approach that we work with our students. We want this to be a liberating experience for them during their time here at El Colegio, for them to find their own voice and for them to be constantly pushing themselves for what they want to learn, to really take ownership of that. Being at El Colegio, I really like being there. Everyone is like a family there. Everyone takes care of you. Everyone treats you right. And no one judges you there. You could totally be yourself. It's something that is like really unique for my high school. Um, compared to other high schools, I feel like Colegio is just a high school that is like more of a homey, like more of a homey high school. It's really, really close. Everyone's really close. And it's just, they like push you a lot to a point where you don't, you didn't even know you could be there. You know, there's, they push you to an extent where it's like, wow, it's just, you're really proud of yourself. And that's what Colegio did for me. A unique space in education. are like in Colegio in terms of the work that we do with uh, cultural relevancy for our students but also as a teacher um, being able to explore that myself as a teacher and then grow in that area and also help our students grow in that area I think is very powerful. In terms of academically I think uh, we meet students where they're at academically so if they need extra help in something, then we start there. And if they're already past and beyond what I'm teaching, then we go there also. So I think um, being small lets us meet students academically where they're at, which is, which is great. So what's unique about El Colegio is that because we have our staff trauma-informed and because they understand that our students finding their identity is so key as a part of key factor to the success of their educational experience. We see the collaboration with students in incredible ways. Having you really like lead um, the space or lead like conversations or um, want to hear what the youth want. And so that may mean from like um, receiving healing practices or healing or creating healing spaces to like really learning how to dismantle like anti-blackness within their homes or in the community or internalized uh, isms that we need to work on. I'm so proud to see who, who has kicked in for us. Who are the ones that are out there in the front lines? Who are the ones that have, that have shown up? There are youth. They put down their phones and they're doing things. And so, um, you know, I it makes me so proud to see, you know, them here and being in the leadership and, and owning it and just, uh, you know, 
the sincerity and, and the integrity that they're doing with the love of where it comes from it's, it's the love for their people and um, and it's it, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing to see um, what they're doing for their community and with no judgment with an open heart um, you know and and with their sweat and and you know and everything that they have in them um, they're showing up they're showing up you know and so it makes me so proud to see to see them um, to see them on, on the front lines and doing all of the hard work that they're doing this school has stepped up in ways they know their community they've been able to reach their community it is incredible I'm so proud of this school I wish people could know just how much this place has helped. So El Colegio not only knows their community, knows how to help them, knows their hours, knows the families, the families call. Um, you know, there's a lot of pride in the Latino community, but this school has been able to really meet them and be like, hey, you know, we heal in community. Colegio High School or Charter School has always been a hub for the community and there's lots of people whether they're former students or former staff or families, you know, who kind of feel that this is this is home to them. And um, so just kind of naturally, I think a lot of people started kind of flocking to the school, flocking to the school's Facebook, flocking to each other's phone numbers to figure out what the next step is. And um, we, we kind of overnight decided to start uh, doing, opening up the store into a mercado. Previously during COVID, El Colegio had been delivering um, meals to Colegio students, uh, families, and community members. Once a week, we would deliver um, these large boxes that we would get, um, and then we would supplement them with culturally relevant food. We're all donation-based too, um, so this is all powered by the community. All the volunteers are community members. Like Jordan said, he is a recent grad from El Colegio. Um, I'm a sister of them, and Jonathan used to work here uh, 10 years ago. A group of folks um, that included us and other folks um, got together and um, really um, started to um, think of what the needs were in our community. And our youth, um, our students, and some of our former students saw a greater need and just organically organized themselves and turned our building into a mercado, into a free grocery store. Something else I really like about Colegio is the community. Even if it's people who don't come to Colegio, don't study there, People who just engage with us, they're like really nice. They're really helpful. Colegio does a lot of things for us. They give us food, they give us support. They give us a lot of help and things that help us in the future. And it's not only for us, it's all for our family. For example, with the distance learning, distance learning, it's hard for me to work like this, but it's something that I can get adaptable to because of the staff. It's something that I can work with with working full time. It's something that I can do and they just help you so much. Like they always have different ways to help you with resources and they don't only help me, but they also help my family with food. For example, if you know they know that it's really hard for us to get a job and have our resources and colegio is just one of the things that instantly helps you like that. And it's really, really helpful. One of the things that here at El Colegio, as we've all said, you know, our priority is seeing our students and um, valuing their mental health, where are they coming from, what do they need, so that when they are in class, they're fully ready to be paying attention to participate and still showing up when they could just say, I'm checked out. Um, it's in our staff have done a huge learning curve um, from normally having our students in front of us, but now having to talk to them through the computer, turn your screen on, I need to see you, I need to check on you. And I think if anything, it's empowered our teachers to become even more um, centered around youth and centered around their well-being because you don't get to see them walking through the hallway. And so I think if anything, some of the positives that came out is just even more intentionality around making connections with our youth that aren't necessarily just academic, but even pushing further, um, making the connections with them about the whole child.